Sure. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, good week. Kind of a long, long week now. Um, kind of we were in a little bit of a rhythm, and then now we get the week off. Um, coming off the pit win, obviously that was a good win. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. But good solid win to go up there. The backyard brawl hadn't got to experience one personally. I went to the football game and got that that side of it, but not you know as the head coach of a team. So um, yeah, felt good about that one. Um, and then like we have the week off before we play Youngstown, so it's a little bit of a different week when you kind of have I don't know if momentum's the right word, but probably a little bit of momentum and. And then you kind of have to get back to practice. So we're talking about practice again this week a little bit, which from a coaching standpoint is great, but trying to keep them motivated sometimes isn't the easiest um, once you get going. Um, but again, yeah, I felt really good about the pit win. Um, played really well to start that game. Um, forced a ton of turnovers. Got up 19 early in the second quarter. A um, little foul trouble, kind of messed with the rotation some. And then we just really didn't play well, um, even watching it back to in that second quarter. And then the beginning of the third, just kind of lost our lost our energy. They went to zone, um, kind of slowed us down, probably got us on our heels just a little bit. Would have probably done a few things different had it, um, looking back at it from just a coaching standpoint through that stretch, but then really liked how we responded once they made that big run in the third quarter and then kind of felt pretty good about it closing it in the fourth quarter, made enough plays, got enough stops, those types of things to you know feel pretty good about it. Uh, so we got a, a Power 5 road win under our belt fairly early in the season. That was our only crack at one of those, so we needed, we needed that. Um, you know, but yeah, players felt good about it, and uh, I think we're in a good spot. Hopefully, getting a little bit healthier. I think we'll be at, at full strength when we play Sunday, um, barring any setback between now and then. Full strength. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, Tirza should be back, we think, on Sunday. Um, I know you inherited this schedule. Would this have been a week you would have had a game slotted in here if you had uh, been able to get one? Yeah, we tried. This was uh, like 15th, 16th, mm -hmm. kind of was. It was a date we had on the calendar as as a potential game to to play. We just could never find find one. I think at one point we did have one, just never got the contract um, finalized. But yeah, this was yeah definitely a little bit longer break right now than than is ideal. Rebounding, obviously, that's going to be an ongoing theme uh, this year. Um, can you do anything schematically, or is it going to have to be? The Everybody gang rebound the whole deal. Is that how it's going to have to be? I think a little bit of both. I mean, Tirza is our best rebounder, so getting her back will help. It doesn't solve all the problems. We knew this. We weren't a great rebounding team a year ago. We tried to address it a little bit. Um, but Danelle did a pretty good job um, rebounding for us when she, you know, Danelle ended up coming in and playing all the fourth quarter and, and even a little bit of the third. But just that bigger body, she didn't get the rebounds necessarily, but she, you know, prevented some of their elite rebounders and allowed Jordan Harrison to go kind of clean some clean some rebounds up. So we're going to have to do it by committee. Um, we'll have to do, rebound a little maybe unconventional at times um, with some of the guards having to maybe get a bunch of rebounds for us. Bigs, maybe it's just hold your girl off, you know, off the board so somebody else can clean it up, as we like to say. So, yeah, so getting tears of back, and, and we'll get better at it. We don't understand it all yet, and there are some rotations if you're playing zone – you know, you don't have a man necessarily that's standing right there in front of you. So, uh, work in progress. I think we'll get better at it. Is it going to be a strength of this team? I'm not sure I could, I would go that far yet, but we've got to at least be able to battle and, and hold steady so we can maybe, you know, get some extra possessions and turnovers in different areas. I was going to ask you if you're not a great rebounding team and you can't be, obviously you work it, but is there other ways you can get possessions and try to do things to protect that a little bit? Well, yeah, I mean, well, so t turnovers and steals is the other way you look at it. So, you know, it's, you need possessions to equalize and some capacity or ideally have the upper hand in that so that's why if we can and rebounding is really offensive rebounding like we rebounding for me if you just look at total rebounds uh, I'm not overly interested in that if we're turning people over they're not going to get shots so we don't have opportunities to get rebounds so I think you have to be a little careful just looking at overall rebounding and maybe more like rebounding rate or offensive rebounding are the things that are really important to me and the way we play and then of course like turnovers and steals those types of things um, is how you make up for rebounding a little bit. Yeah, how much do you still have, and, and when do you kind of have a call to break that out in the game situation? Yeah, no, I don't. I we we still haven't. There's a you know certainly a, a we don't have a ton in, but what we do have in there's a big chunk of the playbook that that we haven't had to run. Um, we've played against a lot of zone. I meant to look it up. I bet we've played probably against 70% zone through the two games right now, 30% man. So that's even though we play zone, 
you know, it's still a little tricky and it's not our zone every day that we're, you know, when we're going against an opponent playing their zone. Um, so that's, you know, it's taken us a little while. I don't think we've scored it great. I honestly was a little disappointed that we turned Pitt over 28 times and only scored 71 points. Like that should have been up in the 80s, mid 80s or higher based off the amount of turnovers. And I think it was 18 steals that game too. So we got to get going a little offensively. Um, you know, we got to play through the paint a little bit more. We're a little, you know, our guards are playing well and shooting it well, and that's great. But we're going to have to find some some paint presence at some point too. So that's kind of been a, a little challenge that we've been working on this week. Kaya Watson has changed her body. Is that was that on her? Did she do that? Was that something you suggested? How did that come about? Uh, no, I would always put put it on the kid for sure. I mean, she's she's worked really hard and had a great summer. And you know, I didn't know. I mean, I'd seen pictures of her, of course, before and and watched it transform a little bit over the summer. But no, Kaya's worked really hard, and it, you know, it's paying off. And you know, she had a fantastic game at Pitt, and I told her we needed every every bit of what she gave us. You know, but she's kind of a you know doesn't you know like just kind of wants the game to come to her. I feel like the more you press her, I don't know that she plays as well. Um, I think she'll just kind of take what you know, the defense gives her, she'll create some stuff with her defense and her effort. But yeah, that motor is, is really good right now. Her understanding her IQ is really good. Um, yeah, pretty easy kid to coach, just pretty even kill again. You know, like a lot of our kids, I look at her sometimes and Kaya, we good, you in there? Like we, you know, and then you ask her a question and she's perfectly fine, you know, but she's just pretty steady Eddie. Um, but yeah, kid you trust for sure to make the right play. Is there something she does that we don't detect or see that you go wow that's that's really good yeah there's probably some you know rotations on defense that just you know you weren't really studying or didn't know what she was supposed to be or where she was supposed to be but she made a play in that pit game where we actually were wrong in our rotation we were in zone and I think it was her and Danelle both kind of had closed out to the high post and then they threw it over the top of us and the kid had a layup and so Kaya was up there with Danelle comes off of her kid and then challenges the kid at the rim and gets a block shot she's fallen out of bounds tries to save it they called her out, but I mean, it would have been, you know, had she not been out and saved it, it would have been just an absolutely unbelievable play. But it was already just crazy how she went from the closeout to the block shot to save us two points. And that was a fourth quarter play, you know, just simple stuff like that, that she's just, yeah, she's just relentless in her effort. But I think that to your first question, now she has the body type to allow her to play those those big minutes. Coach, I'm sure it's pretty hectic offseason trying to get acquainted with your players, trying to get comfortable with them. You got two games under your belt now. Uh, a game in the Coliseum and a road power five rivalry win. Have you ever kind of had a chance now to kind of think, well, here, here I am, I'm at the power five level and, um, you know, here we are. Yeah, um, early on, yes, and probably more so actually before the first game than I have since then. Since then, it's just we're just coaching basketball like we coach basketball, you know, I've been doing for the last whatever, 20 plus years. Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, playing the, the backyard brawl was great. And, you know, power five, the first time I got to, you know, do that on the road, I guess. So maybe for a brief moment, I thought about that. But really, no, not a whole heck of a lot anymore. It's just playing basketball and trying to, you know, again, focus on this team and how we get a little bit better. But, you know, I've kind of been able to take the reflection piece out now and just kind of do the job at hand. I know it's early in the week, and I'm sure you're probably working on you and fixing the pit stuff, but what can you tell us about Youngstown State? Yeah, I don't know that I can tell you too much yet. I mean, uh, some of the staff has started out. Pro- we are, we're off tomorrow, so I'll start that scout um, tomorrow. And then we're, you know, if time permits, we're always two days in front of the game is when we start, you know, an opponent scout. So that would be a, fr- you know, a Friday, Saturday, you know, prep. So Thursday gives me the time. So I, I know a little bit about them. They have, I think, four or five West Virginia kids on their roster. Um you know, so they'll be excited to come to come back. I do know that they have some size. One of those is a six five kid that I think went to Tennessee, um, out of high school from the state of West Virginia. Um, so I, you know, we'll have a, a paint presence to defend. I know they have another six four kid I think off the bench. Um, I think they're veteran. I think they've been there. Um, so they'll be a, a well oiled machine for this time of year. And I think that's what you see. You know, you just have teams and upsets this time of year because you have that. You know, some of these mid majors even beaten. You know, power fives is they're veteran. They've been around coaching you know staff that's been there although the Youngstown coach has stepped down so they have an interim coach at the moment but he, he, he's been there for a minute um, you know and so they just know they're like well-oiled machines Colorado women beating LSU the way they did well you know Colorado's veteran and they've been there and they were in the Sweet 16 and LSU's trying to figure it out so the timing worked and Colorado played great 
Um, but they were clicking, you know, in that game. And, and so I think Youngstown will present that challenge a little bit like a Layola, just from a returning and a coach that's been there. Um, but they're picked, I think, to win, win the horizon, if I'm not mistaken. I know I saw the bracketology yesterday. Our coaches were talking about that, and they were picked to – they were in it. Um, yeah, so they, they're, 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 they're doing something right right now. And I, like I said, I'll learn more tomorrow and Friday. Anticipate too, since you've seen it probably a little bit of zone. You probably see some zone. At some yeah, point. you know they don't play it very much. You know, but neither did Pitt. You know, and there and you know Coach Verdi's past. I think he was a eighty-eight percent man guy, or maybe more. I can't remember what it was. I mean, we were not necessarily expecting to see zone, um, but you know, a lot of times early coaches like to play it because the opposing coach hasn't. We don't prepare for that a ton early in the year. You spend all summer playing man and working on your man offense, and then we get here and everybody throws zone at you. So thankfully we do play quite a bit of zone, so we have some comfort there. Um, but again, when it's not your zone, it's not what you're going against every day, it still feels different. Well, I guess the thought, too, would be to slow you down. Well, that's I think that's what Pitts was. I mean, I, you know, we were turning them over. We were going in man. We were moving it. We're spacing it. We're pretty quick at the guard, you know. And so it's a – I think they ran their little token press, which they never trapped one time out of it, but it was just to show us something so we didn't flow nearly as quickly. And, and, and we didn't, and that's why I said I'd probably do some, some things differently to just kind of get some of our flow and rhythm back a little bit quicker. Um, but I think it was a 22-2 to two run that they went on, and you don't usually win when the opposing team goes on a 22-2 to two run, but thankfully we did enough early. Mark, how much early in the season do you experiment with rotation, substitution patterns, and when do you kind of want to have those defined a little bit more? Yeah, well, the sooner the better, but yeah, there, we're, we're experimenting like crazy right now. Like I said, Danell finished, you know, played 13 minutes a row in a row to end that game, and no offense to her, but I didn't know if she could play 13 minutes in a row at a game, you know, in a close game like that. I thought she would be much more in the three or four minutes at a time type kid. But um, no, so she did a great job, but I didn't I wouldn't have thought that that was probably going to happen. So I keep telling them, guys, like there'll be lineup differences. Foul trouble will dictate some of this. I mean, you know, at full strength for us is 10 players. So we only got we got 10 options. Um, so we're going to still work through that. I don't know what they are completely yet. Um, I've told some of the team that just stay with it. If you don't like your role, it can change. You know, it, we are not completely settled yet. But ideally, I would love to be settled and already have it figured out. But just we're probably too new um, to know that quite yet. Typically, what is it? Eight usually used in conference play? Is that? Uh, yeah, I mean, we could go anywhere from eight to ten. Um, I mean, if, if we have ten in years past, we've had ten, and our bench was as good or better than other teams that that we played. And I would go ten deep. Um, so we can go ten deep. Um, we could probably go eight. Eight nine. Once we get into the league, late in the year, conference tournament type, you know, you can get it to seven eight probably by then, and you're in pretty good shape. But at this point, you're not in, you know, we're not in great game shape yet. So we got to get some kids a little rest here and there too. Um, you know, JJ and Jordan, we got to keep an eye on those two. Just you know, smaller bodies asking them to do a lot the way we play, and um, so we got to keep an eye on them and, and get them as much as much rest as we possibly can. I guess the message to them is earn your trust and get in that mix right now is the time to do that well yeah i think that's really yeah whether it's now or any time is we're trying to earn each other's trust i keep saying every time we we take the court practice or games i'm learning more about them and i'm sure they're learning more about about me um but i don't want them to sit and think about that too much just do what you do do it really really well play to the best of your ability and the rest will take care of itself i'll ultimately make that decision but i always say playing time is really based upon how you perform and play and your character and how you study and how you watch film. And then I just get to make the ultimate call on it. But yeah, I'm a feel guy too. Once we get in the game and I'll play the hot hand a little bit, if you're going like, I hate pulling, you know, kid makes two or three threes and then you sub them out. I'm like, no, like you're going, like if you're making two, like you're going to play. All right. We got a mismatch inside. I don't care how tired you are. We're going to you until, you know, they make the adjustment. So I'll let kids play through some stuff. Um, you know, especially a hot hand. Um, I'll never take them out you know, for that one, unless they're just dog tired, but we've had kids ask to come out before and I'll give them the, the no, <laughs> you know, or maybe burn a timeout, but those are pretty sacred in the women's game now with the advance late in the game too. I don't want to burn a lot of timeouts because you need them late. One other thing here, um, I know the trait last year with last year's team, it seems to be applying this year is there have been quarters where you've completely shut people down. They did that last year. I think you had a two point quarter against Loyola. 
Are you seeing that from your players where you've, you've got that ability to shut people down? Well, yeah, we, I mean, we've been pretty good defensively so far. You know, I think we're just giving up 50 a game, and I think we've given up four threes in two games combined, you know, and they're not shooting at a great percentage. So, you know, single-digit quarters are kind of what we talk about a little bit more probably as a coaching staff than even with the players, but we do bring that up a little bit. If you can get teams in single-digit quarters and multiple single-digit quarters, then you're probably going to have a pretty good game defensively now not two or four but you know eight nine seven eight nine like those types of quarters I think give you a chance and our offense right now is really I mean it's a pretty up and down I mean it's it's we're not very consistent yet offensively so we need some quarters like that to kind of save us because really through our scrimmages these first two games our offense has kind of disappeared for stretches and so we're working pretty hard to, to kind of eliminate that when you get when you hit those walls, is it is it player driven? Is it scheme? well? It's a little bit of both. I mean, you know, it's a turnover stretch where we're not even getting good looks, or the shot quality that we're getting isn't good enough. So showing them, hey guys, like look, there's 15 seconds on the shot clock, and we're taking a contested three. Like let's maybe be a little more patient. So my word has just been trust, you know, and I don't mean that like in a bad way. They just don't know either, and so sometimes they're just trying to make too many plays themselves and not trusting each other or trust the ball is what I, is my turn. Like, let the ball work for you, right? It moves faster than you do. You know, it's like the old, I'll line him up at the baseline and say, all right, you think you can dribble the length of the floor pass faster than I can throw this ball, you know? And then like, no, like the ball moves faster than the dribble. So let the ball work for you a little bit. And we don't do that enough. Although I thought we did it better against Pitt than we did against Loyola. And then I think, ass- and typically assists will show you that. Um, but not always, because you can move the ball really well and just miss open shots. And so assists might be low. But I want to say we had 19 assists. I don't remember if that's right or not. But I think it was 19 at, at Pitt, and that's a pretty good number for us. When you're in those laws like that, is that on, do you feel like you got to call a set or something to get – get a look that you want is that when you do that yeah I can and against Loyola again we had those lulls and I didn't want to give away much so I just kind of you know I I didn't help them there Um, and I could have helped them and then Pitt went to so much zone that you know I don't have that many zone sets or looks in so we're kind of we're getting a little redundant with some of our our looks maybe switching sides I think we ran a couple man sets against Pitt's zone just because we were familiar with it so yeah as we go we can whether it's a set or just a quick hitter or things like that we can manipulate that to help those lulls a little bit so I think we'll get better yeah Obviously, Loyola didn't pose as much of a you know four quarter challenge as Pitt did but how good was it for your girls to, in game one, get that challenge down low with the Terrian girl getting the double-double? I know she came into the game last season averaging a double-double. How good is that for the development of the rebounding uh, effort so far? Yeah, well, it's been – yeah, we've had two games with really good post rebounding post players. So Pitt had two of them in there. terrian has been pretty good. I think she had another big double-double the next night, you know, or the next game that they played. So, yeah, we've been challenged early um, in the post with some good post play. I think Youngstown's – you know, I talked about the 6'5 kid coming in from Youngstown who can rebound it as well. So we're going to get another challenge there. So, yeah, it's great for us because we're most likely going to get it every night in the Big 12. So I think this is just a precursor for what's going to happen, you know, once we get to Big 12 play. Um, but we need to be a little better. We haven't played particularly well against those post players, so this will be another challenge to see if we can kind of try to shut down or you know a little bit of a of a dominant post kid. So we'll get that challenge again Sunday. But yeah, it's uh, it's challenged us, and we got to be a little better from it. League. There have been some pretty impressive results so far in the first couple of weeks of the season. Anything jump out at you? Yeah, no, well, Baylor got a great one, I think, against number four, Utah. I think they were four right last night, so that's a good one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, keeping tabs on it a little bit. Penn State got Kansas um, the other night. You know, that's not in, in the good way, but we watched because we play Penn State coming up here in a little bit. So, um, you know, so that one kind of surprised me a little bit the other way because I think Kansas is a really talented basketball team this year. So, yeah, you know, but, yeah, no, we're following along, kind of keeping – tabs from a distance again I've just haven't been in the league so I don't know it a ton yet and being so new it's been so much more on us but yeah if I've got a few minutes here or there I'll pull on the ESPN app or something and watch a few minutes just to kind of see what what's coming and then down the line next year you got some really good teams coming in Colorado and so it's, it's going to be a really interesting yeah, it's not going to get any years. easier does it yeah no it'll it'll change a little bit and we'll figure out the schedule on how, how how we play and where we go but um yeah it's a grind I mean and we know that but that's why we need to be really good in the non-conference because you know what's coming and so that's why these games become really really important if you're talking about NCAA tournament you know and net rankings and you want to be efficient you know all of that's you got to win them but then be efficient and and how you win them. That all plays into account when you're talking about NCAA tournament seating, seating line, you know, those types of things. So there is a lot to play for this time of year for us, and we need to be pretty, you know, we, we need to learn how to win, but see if we can't be dominant in some of the, you know, some of these matchups. And I 
guess the other thing is variety of play, style of play. You need to see a lot of different style of play, I guess. Yeah, and I think that I think we're going to get that. I mean, through 11, 12 game non conference schedule, you're going to see plenty of different ways to play. Um, you know, through two though, it's been actually a lot of zone and two three zone in the half court. So we've through two, it hasn't been a lot of variety, but uh, at some point, it, it's going to come. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll do it. Thanks, everybody.